So JD's team absolutely wrecked this post to a judge, which that certain Aquaman starlet posted before the trial, saying that this contained opening arguments for that certain Aquaman starlet side. This was meant to lead people. It was meant to make arguments outside of the court. And that, yeah, that's not allowed at all. Now, you and I, we're going to look at the transcript where this is called out in front of the judge in just a moment. But of particular interest is this one little line here. I never named him. Why? Because the entire defense for that certain Aquaman starlet is predicated on the notion that they never named JD in the article. This, it's blatantly false, by the way. I'm going to show you that, too. Oh, man, crazy times, huh? Crazy times indeed. So, hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. Quickly, before we get started, check out our project. Link is in the description. Industry allowed this nonsense to happen. They denigrate consumers, put out terrible products. Walk away from them, walk towards something better. Help us send a message. Thank you. So JD's team absolutely wrecks that post from that certain Aquaman starlet. And the way that they do it, I mean, it's really slick because they bring it up with other misdeeds that certain Aquaman starlet's team has been involved in. Namely, the debacle with one Eve Barlow. If you don't know what happened with that, by the way, Eve Barlow was kicked out of the court. That's the girlfriend of that certain Aquaman starlet. Why? Because they used false evidence to get another person kicked out. They were live tweeting in the court and so much more. You'll see this brought up in real time here. This is the discussion about it. See how they loop the two subjects together. Here we start out with Eve Barlow. So Eve Barlow, that's the she, was tweeting in the courtroom. She was sitting right there, tweeting during Miss Vasquez's opening. Your Honor may remember that Miss Vasquez said that that certain Aquaman starlet was giving the performance, would be giving the performance of her lifetime. So she says in real time, actually, that was Vasquez who was giving the performance of a lifetime of her life. So this contemporaneous with my colleague, opening. She's live tweeting and getting it all out to the public. And finally, and this is the last time, I'm sorry, your honor will remember that when we raised the issue, your honor ordered people to the back. So Eve Barlow reluctantly left the front seat and went to the back. And this was the tweet that got her thrown out last time. Quote, What does that certain Aquaman starlet hope to achieve? She has a gorgeous one-year-old daughter, and she said she was beginning the rest of her life in 2021, 12 months after her mother died. And it was at that point that Lieutenant Porter saw her violating the court order and asked her to leave. Now, Your Honor, if this were just isolated, well, actually, I'll take that back. It's more. And then you had the court say, that would be the judge, if you violate the order, you violate the order. And Mr. Chu says, well, it's more than enough to get her thrown out permanently, but it also, it takes place in a context. Your Honor will remember the inappropriate disclosure of certain violations is violation of the protective order, perhaps more egregiously because people weren't on participating by WebEx in this one. Two days before the trial, that certain Aquaman starlet posted on Instagram her opening argument. And I understand none of the jurors referred to it, but she made it very clear in her Instagram post that JD's name wasn't mentioned in the op-ed, which was a primary feature of Mr. Rottenborn's opening. This was really egregious. Now, that move, by the way, does end up with Eve Barlow being banned from the court. So, the judge actually sided with JD's team, heard what they were saying. But more importantly, they see yet another violation there, which this very much is. I mean, if you read through it and you think about this, you think who it's targeted to, it's not just targeted to people on Instagram. Only 50,000 people have actually liked that, which is really low considering someone has over 4 million followers. But beyond that, it goes out to the media. It could influence potential jurors and on. Listen to what it says here. 
quote, I'm going to go offline for the next several weeks. Of course, they're going to go offline for the next several weeks. We're talking about a six weeks trial. As you may know, I'll be in Virginia where I face my ex-husband J.D. in court. J.D. is suing me for an op-ed I wrote in the Washington Post in which I accounted my experience of, I'm just going to use the letter V, and I'm going to use the letter DV for that. I never named him. That's the portion they brought up, which I'm going to shoot down in just a second. Rather, I wrote about the price women pay for speaking out against men in power. I continue to pay that price, but hopefully when this case concludes, I can move on, and so can J.D. I have always maintained a love for J.D., and it brings me great pain to have to live out the details of our past life together in front of the world. At this time, I recognize the ongoing support I've been fortunate to, and she goes on to give her closing, but you get the idea here. Now, what's interesting is also knowing how much weight that certain Aquaman, Starlet, and her team are putting on that narrative, considering that narrative, it has been debunked big time. See, there were emails behind the scenes. These emails, by the way, they are 100% public. They are part of this trial, but they're between her and that certain co-conspirator organization. They talk about the reason they want to do this. They talk about things like, hey, you know... We need lawyers to look over this to make sure you don't violate your non-disclosure agreement. Oh, do you like the way I put this together? Your lawyers, they should review it for the way that I skirted around talking about your marriage. And more importantly, when you look at the early drafts of this, they sound like this. Quote, Then two years ago, when I got my TRO against my then-husband, I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women that speak out. The day I left the courtroom, I walked into a pack of hundreds of photographers. I didn't have a team of bodyguards. My lawyers used their own bodies to block out space for me to walk to my car. The whole way there, I heard Presh yelling the same question in one form or another. Is it true you're making all of this up? They tell her in no uncertain terms in that we need to cut out words like marriage. We need to cut out words like divorce. We need to cut out words like restraining order. Why do they need to cut them out? Because they point to the person that you're speaking about here. That person you're speaking about, well, we all know who she was married to. We all know who she got a TRO against. So again, that is 100% debunked. She debunked it herself behind the scenes. But you know, hey, that's all they've got left. And to end, I want to say back our project. Link is in the description. We know that industry empowered this. They sat on the truth for a year, denigrating their customers, saying your opinions don't matter. We know it's best for our products. When you're moving past them, though, don't give them the medium. Help us build an alternative industry. Link is in the description, like I said, and you are powerful in this. So help us. Thank you. Appreciate you. Leave your comments, too. Next time, we will see you soon.